So it's going live. Am I live? All right. There's always this moment where it says it's going live and I don't know when it's actually starting. So I'm like <laughs> waiting until it finally says it. And then I look back at the videos and it's always me just sitting here waiting for it. Anyway, hi guys. Welcome to Beginner Hula. Um, we're starting new choreography today. So I wanted to start this as like an intro level class. So, um, oh wait, hold on, please. I have a knock at my door. So please just hold on a second, sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm glad I got it though, because it was the electrician who wanted to turn power off. And I said, no, we're having our Thursday class. No. So we're good. He's going to wait until after our class is over. And um, yes, so sorry about that. Welcome to my live stream. <laughs> okay, today we're going to start new choreography. So I wanted this to be an intro level class. So um, it, anybody who has literally never danced Tula before, this is the place for you to start if you have never. So if you have friends who have been interested in this class and they're not here today, you can point them to this recording to get started. And then over the next four weeks, we're gonna keep going through our introduction. So if you already are familiar with Hula, of course, please stick around because I want you to dance. And also it's important to continue to keep working on your fundamentals and keep checking in with yourself, especially right now when we're all like dancing in our spare bedrooms and our living rooms, all that stuff. Um, we, we want to keep working our technique, even though we might not have a teacher there with us who is able to correct us. We want to start being able to correct ourselves. So we're going to start with our normal warm up and stretch. Again, um, if you're new to this, we're starting with big, big hip circles that we call AMI. And I want you to follow my direction and my tempo. So I'm going to go a specific direction and then I'll switch it and I want you to follow me. I'm gonna start with my feet really wide apart. That's just so I can keep warming up my legs and the muscles around my hips. But as I, um, when I bring my feet in, my feet are a little bit less than shoulder width apart. So don't put, bring your feet cl close together like this. Bring them a little bit less than shoulder width apart like that and keep them super straight, okay? So let's get started. Just follow me and then we'll keep going with our basics. Here we go. <clears throat> And all right, here we go. Let's start in the back here. Here we go, four counts. Back, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Let's switch directions. Ready? Back, one, two, front, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, Three, four, one, two. Now let's switch. Let's go double time. Ready? Back. One, two, one, two. Push around. We're making big hip circles as big as you can. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's switch sides. Ready? And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two and switch. Slow again. Back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Another side. Here we go. Back. One, two, three, four. Back. One, two. Front. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Good. Bring your feet in. Switch. Double time. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Good. Keep going. Push. 
And switch sides. Same tempo. One, two, one, two, one, two. Good. Use your knees. Push them back and forth. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. And switch. Let's go four here. Then we're going to turn. Two, three. Now use this foot. Ready? Step around. One, two, three. And switch. Let's do the same thing. Other side. Four here. Two, three, and four. Now let's do it. One, two, three, and four. And switch. Stay here. One, two, three. And switch. One, two, three, and switch. Ready? Let's go two up, two down. One, two, and drop. One, two, up. One, two, drop. One, and let's switch. One, two, drop. One, two, keep it big, push. Hold your upper body still. Two, drop, one, and switch. One, two, and let's switch. Good. And lava, stop. Good job. Roll your shoulders a little bit. Let's get ready. We're going to stretch now that we've warmed up just a little. Reach up. Here we go. And up on your toes. You go push. Good. Now let's go up and down into squats. Reach up, down, up, down. Good job, hold it here, reach up, hold, hold, hold. Reach up, up on your toes, and down, hold here. Squatting down, shoulders back. Good, up and over to the left, reach, switch. Good, hold here, reach over, hold. And switch. Good. Reach up with a super flat back. You're going to hinge at the waist. Reach forward. And side to side reach. And all the way down. Over to one side. And let's turn our feet this way. We're lunging. Remember when you lunge to drop this heel back here because you want to stretch the whole back of your leg all the way down through your heel and all the way through your Achilles. Good. Now here, you the front and down, lunging down. As far as you want to go, sit up tall. Okay, sit up tall. I can feel the stretch on the inside of my outstretched leg, so try to get that stretch in there however it feels comfortable for you. Hands up. And down. And now I'm going to switch to stretch the back of my leg. So however you feel comfortable doing that, if you're down here like me, pull your toes back and flex that foot. And let's push up, X center. 
single class and this is a drill to work your ha'aleva and also your hands so if this is your first introduction to hula and you don't really know anything about it besides what you might have seen on tv or what you kind of have the image you have in your mind i want you to throw out everything you think you know about how you're going to move your hands around because the important thing first is to develop control and dexterity in your hands which means first your hands need to know what the heck they're doing, right? They need to learn where are they supposed to sit? How are you supposed to hold them? And if you think about this stuff now and you train your hands right now, then you're not going to have to think about them in the future. They're just going to magically land right here with your elbow where it's supposed to be, with your fingers closed, all that stuff. So to start with that, with this drill, we're going to, um, our hands are going to be out like this. We're gonna keep the fingers together and all we're doing is stretching this hand. So I'm stretching up from the center of my hand. See how my hand stretches like that? Stretching the center of my hand and I'm keeping my thumb alongside this hand. I'm not pushing the thumb out like this. It's not, it's not out like that. It's alongside and stretching up, dropping down. I'm stretching from the middle of my hand. I'm relaxing it down. That's it. That's all you need to do. That's it. Simple, small movement, up, down. Stretching, relaxing, stretching, relaxing. And with my arms outstretched, I want them to be outstretched like this. See how they're pretty straight here? They're not like this. Okay, that's not straight, like that. I want a little bend so that my hands can be, my arms can be outstretched nice and straight. Stretching, relaxing stretching, relaxing, okay? That's all your hands are doing. If your hands are going like this, I want you to tell your hands to chill out, relax, stretch, relax. If your fingertips are going like this, I want you to tell your fingertips to chill out. You wanna stretch, relax from the center of your hand. Stretch, relax, stretch, relax. Later on, there's time to do all this fancy stuff. When you see these, you know, when you see people dancing and they're doing all this beautiful, all these beautiful things, there's time to get there. But when you first start out, your hands need to learn where to live and how to sit. So you need to teach them just to relax, stretch and relax, stay together, stretch and relax. Okay, we're also going to work on our ha'aleva. So let's go over our posture really quick. My home base, the way that I teach is like this, feet super straight, a little bit less than shoulder width apart. You always want to bend your knees when you're dancing hula, when you're doing pretty much any Polynesian dance, because that's really where your range of motion comes from. So I'm here. And then when I'm swinging out, my ha'aleva is my sway back and forth. So I'm swaying right, left. And you can mirror me, right, 
left. So what I'm doing is I'm using my knees. My knees are um, moving alternately from each other like this. They're not moving together. So my knees are not glued together like this, right? They're moving back and forth. So my knees are going back and forth as opposed to staying together like this. Move them back and forth. Good, and then using your knees in addition to the muscles above your hips, that's going to help you keep your upper body stable because if you're moving here like this, then as you shift your weight back and forth, your body, your upper body can stay nice and still. And that's the goal is to keep your upper body super still. What happens a lot is even if we've got that really pretty smoothness, what happens is we'll roll our upper body like this. So if you're doing that, I want you to try to, and it can be hard to tell sometimes, so don't be afraid to record yourself and look because that's really gonna help you see it, okay? So those two things we're gonna be doing together, our ha'aleva and our hands, stretching, Relaxing. The stretch is always going to be on the right side. The relax is always going to be on the left side. Okay, let's do it. Let's start with our ha'aleva. And we're here, starting your position. I ha'a, bend nice and low. And ha'aleva, push right, left. Hold your body still. Left. Listen to the music, right. Good. Keep going. Let's add the hands. Stretch. Relax. Stretch. Relax. Stay low. Remember, bend the knees because that's where your range of motion comes from. Push right, left. Stretch up. Down. Keep going. Right. Left. Right. Left. Keep going. Keep your high level going. Keep going. Sway. Right. Left. Your hands are here. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Keep going. Right. Left. Fingertips together. Right. Left. Stretching. Relaxing. Stretching. Relaxing. Good. Keep going. Push. Good. Keep going. Keep your elbows pointed out. Not pointed. Elbows are not pointed out. But keep your elbows nice and high. Don't let them drop. Even if you're getting tired. I don't care. Push. Keep going. Push. Right. Left. Right. Left. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, right, left. Stretch up, down. Small movement, up, down, up. Check in with your feet. Are your feet flat? If you're a Tahitian dancer, I don't want you rolling your feet. Do not roll your feet like you're doing a huda. I can see you. I'm just kidding, I can't see you. But don't do it. Keep your feet flat and think of the waves of the ocean pushing right, left. Right, left. Keep going. We're going to step forward. A word for that is imwa. Imwa means forward. Go forward. Ready? And imwa, step right. Left, right, left, right. Upper body still. Right. And ihope, go back. Right. Left, right, left, right, left, push, right, left. Keep going, flat feet, right, left. Keep going, push, right, left, right, left. Stay low in your knees, low in your knees. That's where your range of motion comes from. If you're up too high, you won't be able to sway. Left, right, left, you're almost done. Keep going, push, right, left, 
right? And lava. Now slowly, good. Are your shoulders sore? I hope so. You want to build up those shoulder muscles too, right? We always talk about hula legs and nobody talks about hula shoulders, but you got to be able to hold your arms up for however long your class is. An hour, two hours, four hour workshop. You better get your elbows up high. Okay, good job. Next, let's put that into um, one of the reasons why we work on our ha'a level so hard is because your ha'a level is going to form the basis of most all of the moves that you're going to be doing. And so the second move we need to learn today is our kaholo. So kaholo is what people think of usually when they think about hula, right? It's your two steps to the right and two steps to the left. But I want to make sure you don't just worry about your feet because if you only worry about your feet, you're going to get this kaholo. Right? That's why we do our ha'a level first because we want to sway in there. So as we're swaying, we're pushing side to side, right, left, right, tap, left, right, left, tap. But again, be careful. I want you to be careful that you're keeping your upper body still because what can happen a lot with this kaholo is we rock like this, right? Again, because we think. It's not our body's fault. Our body just wants to help. Our body's like, oh, I want to get in on the mix, right? I want to be part of this. You got to be like, no shoulders. You have a different job. Stay still. Let the hips do what they're doing. Move the skirts. Okay? So that's our kaholo. If you keep your upper body nice and still, you're giving more control, and you're kind of giving yourself more of a Controlled, elegant appearance, emphasizing your hands and the movement that they're doing. So we go right and left. Again, please notice that I'm not going like this. Especially not at first. Yes, you might see people doing their kahola like this. Of course. And that's a very stylistic thing or depending on how they're trained and how far along they are, absolutely. If you are new, I need you to keep your hands controlled. I want you to focus on placing your hands. Then when you need to move them, I want you to pick them up and place them in their new spots. So you're picking up your hand and you're placing it down as opposed to just moving it. Smack in the air, smack in the air. Smack, smack. No, place, pick up and place. Pick up, place, pick up, place. Okay? All right, so let's do a song with our kaholo. We'll go a little bit fast to get a little bit of that workout in. Remember to stay low. If you're pushing side to side and you're standing up too high without bending in your knees, you're not going to have any range of motion. So here we go. And here we go. Kaholo. And we go, okay, can Push side to side. Good, look side to side. Watch your outside hand. Good, keep going. Push. Keep on, remember that? Go forward. Keep going. Be hope back. Ha aleva. Yeah, did you get it? Right? Left. Right. Keep on push. Still. Oh, hold on.
की हो पे So those are our two basics for today. Um, we want to get in our halava and our kaholo. So our halavas are sway right and left, and our kaholo is two steps to the right and two steps to the left. We're going to go over one more basic today because it's part of our um, part of our song choreography. We're going to learn. So our kahela is our point right and left, and again, your halava still comes into this too because it's about moving the hips to balance your weight. So keep your hands here. This is your makoko position, your ready position. We have to ai ha'a, again, bend your knees, and we point out. Point out. Again, be careful. Remember, what do your shoulders wanna do? They either wanna rock like this, or your body wants to shift with the weight over your foot. I want you to watch out for those two things. And make sure that you're bending low enough so that your hip can swing out far enough to displace enough weight that your upper body stays centered. Does that make sense? Because if you don't, your body's going to move your whole self over so you don't fall down. Okay? So if you move the weight from both feet to one foot, to one foot, other foot, other foot, your whole body has to move so that you don't fall. But if you bend and push this hip out, then your upper body can stay exactly where it is without you needing to shift over the weight in your upper body. So you can stay centered here and still, and yet you can shift the weight from one foot to another by using your hips here. So we're gonna point out, when I point out, my toe is turned out 45 degrees, it's turned out diagonally, but my foot is pushing out straight forward. So it's straight forward on this foot, but toe is turned out a little bit. It's not out here like this, it's like that. Pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. Okay, the great thing about these moves is they can build range of motion while you're practicing them because you should feel a nice, comfortable, gentle stretch on each side. And that's your body really helping you kind of elongate your muscles over time. So I want you to feel the, the extent of your range of motion out here like this, right? Okay, so let's do one more song with our drills. Again, we're gonna go back and forth. We've now learned our ha'aleva, which is our sway, our kaholo, which is our two steps to the right and two steps to the left. We've learned imua, which is forward, and ihope, which is back. And now this is our kahela. So I want you to listen to the words because if you don't know these words yet, it's really part of studying hula to learn all these words so that when they get called out, you know what to do. You can jump straight into your kaholo. You can jump straight into your kahela. You can imua, ihope. We'll do huli, which is turn. We won't do that today, but still. You'll know all these terms and you'll be able to just do them. Okay? Here we go. All right. <laughs> so, your makoko positions, your ready positions. I ha. And kaholo. Good. Keep going with your kaholo. I'm going to change the hands. Now I want you to go forward, side, forward, side. Okay, now we're gonna do that, but we're gonna hold the other hand up. So my hand stays here, I'm here. Forward, side. 
Okay, keep this elbow tucked back by your shoulder. Good job, keep going. Ready, Imoa? Watch your hands and forward, side. E hope it. Good, keep going. Good job. Halama. Right, left, hold your shoulder still, right. Imoa. Right. Ihope, go back. Right. Left. Now I'm gonna go two up, two down. I'm here. One, two, drop. Good job, keep going. Now I want you to stay low, stay low, Imoa. Sit into it. Sit low. Low, low, low. Keep your back straight. Ooh. Sit low, sit low. Oh, hold on. Good job. Forward, side. Forward, side. Good job. Keep going. Good, ready? Let's go, Hala. Hands down. Point. Point. Push the hips. Point. 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 Hala. And double time, ready? We've got a tempo change here, so listen. one more move which is the ummy which we did in our warm-up which we're gonna um 
work on a little bit more with our choreography, but don't worry about that, we'll get there. First, let's go over what we're doing today. Well, choreography, we're learning an introduction to the song, and also, since this is an introduction to hula, it's really important that you get a little introduction to the language also. So, I've posted every class I have, um, every choreography we do, there is a link to a Google Drive folder with resources for you. And I'm gonna add to that folder, um, and but it'll always be the same link. So just bookmark this if you're learning this choreo, and then you can check back. Um, so in it, you'll find the lyrics to our song, Ikona. So if you can open those up, that would be awesome. Um, I'm gonna pull up my, oh, first language, okay. Hawaiian language gets a bad, bad rap. First of all, we call it Olelo Hawaii. That is the name of the Hawaiian language. That's the proper name of the Hawaiian language, Olelo Hawaii. And people seem to have this idea that it's difficult. And I totally understand that language can be really difficult for many people. Um, I love languages. I love learning new languages. But I think part of the reason I love it is because I have a little bit of a knack for it. So it's really fun for me. I know for other people, it's a lot more difficult. And so it can be really frustrating. And so I want to take some of that frustration out for you by just giving you some basic rules to follow and then telling you to just practice as much as you can. Um, so if you understand just a few basic rules, you can pronounce pretty much any language in, in Olelo Hawaii. Um, I'm also, I was taking a, a Reo Tahiti course, a Tahitian class. That is not the same. It is harder. <laughs> so we're pretty lucky with Olelo Hawaii that it's all spelled phonetically and we can sound out all these words. So first of all, let's go over our... Um, our uh, alphabet, here's my Popoki Lincoln, who is wanting to take our language class today. So let's go over our alphabet, which um, we have 13 letters in our alphabet. And let's start with our vowels and how our vowels sound. So if you know any Spanish, the vowels are gonna be just like Spanish. Um, and that includes A, E, I, O, U. And we, uh, the sounds that we make for those are a, e, e, o, u, a, e, e, o, u, okay? So those are our regular five vowels. Again, just like Spanish vowels, if you know any Spanish. And then our consonants, we have, um, let's see if I, we have, uh, we say them as he, ke, la, mu, nu, pi, ve, okina. And that is H, K, L, M, N, P, W, okina. All right, so, and all of those, with the exception of the okina, we'll get there, are pronounced just like they are in Hawaiian. He is H, that's K is K, that's K. La is L, is L, M is Mu, then we have Nu is N, P is P, and V is W. So W, you'll hear W pronounced as a W sound, or as like a soft B sound, like a V sound, or as like a V sound, like a V. All of them are correct. It's like a dialect thing. It's pretty <laughs> the ki the kitties love hula. I must say they love to <laughs> they love to dance. So, anytime you hear those um those consonants, um you'll you you will hear them pronounced a little bit differently, but they're all spelled the same. And however you say them is people are going to understand. Now the way that the um that Olelo Hawaii was originally written down, you know, the the Hawaiian language used to be very different than it is today, obviously. We went through a period where people were trying to, you know, take our language, just like a lot of cultures have experienced. People were trying to make everybody just kind of convert to English and that's it. Um, but we had some really um, incredible brave people who were able to keep the language alive. And then fortunately we experienced experienced a huge uh, resurgence thanks to some people who worked really hard in getting um, immersion schools and Olelo Hawaii taught um, everywhere so that kids could start growing up speaking the language of their of their culture of their people and we're really lucky that they've done that I'm a big believer in the in you know I think it's apparent to everybody how 
um, vital language is to culture and to identity, to having a cultural identity. So giving that tool back to children as they're growing up as early as preschool, um, fluency in their own language has been um, not just a beautiful thing to see, but a really important thing to an empowering thing to see for our Kiki, for our kids. So I'm really grateful that those people have done all the work that they've done since the 70s. And it's just it's just an amazing thing to see. We're all really lucky. Um, okay, so let's get to I'm off on a tangent. Um, our 13th consonant is the Okina. The Okina is pronounced as a glottal stop. And you'll see it spelled the way it looks. It looks like a backwards apostrophe, although a lot of people when they're typing it, they can't find the Okina on their type on their keyboard. So um, they just type a regular apostrophe. That's fine. People know what you mean. Um, but it's very important that you pay attention to the okina, that you use them while you're spelling words, and that you pronounce them properly. And it's really easy. We pronounce them all the time. It's the difference between saying uh-oh and oh, right? We do glottal stops all the time. So anytime you see two vowels put together, and if they have that okina in between them, that's a consonant. You need to put the glottal stop in between those two letters or else you need to glide them together. So I'll give you an example. Um, uh, well, la'i, that's a good example. And that's in our lyrics. The word la'i, which means like peaceful, like serenity, is spelled L-A-O-K-I-N-A-I. So we pronounce it la'i as opposed to la'i, right? We don't say I, we don't say, we want to pronounce all our vowels all the time. So you have an A and an I, which is I, but you have an Okina between them. So it becomes I. So we say La'i as opposed to Lai. So we want to make sure that we're pronouncing all of our vowels properly and getting those Okina in there. A couple words that are pronounced incorrectly a lot that we see um, and that we hear are words like, um, like, um, Honolulu, right? When we look at when we look at the word Honolulu, the city is spelled Hono, H O N O L U L U. Honolulu. We need to round out that o, ho, as opposed to ha, like us English speakers is saying ah as our long o. Hana is if I said the word Hana. I would be saying it would be spelled H-A-N-A because -A, ah is how we pronounce our A, right? So we want to make sure we're saying Honolulu and not Hanalulu because we've just changed the meaning of the word completely. Another one is uh, Kamehameha. That's an example of a word that's really difficult. It can be really hard to um, give the H sound after a vowel. So people say, what do they say? Kamehameha, right? We hear it all the time, Kamehameha. But what we have to do is practice Kamehameha. We have to get that H sound in there or else again, we've changed his name from being Mehameha, M-E-H-A, M-E-H-A to Kamehameha, which would be M-E-A-M-E-A. -E -E so we wanna make sure that we are pronouncing all of our letters and that we're giving the proper sounds to those letters. And again, it just takes a little bit of practice. Sometimes we see really, really long words or phrases strung together as place names and we go, oh, oh my gosh, I can't, we, go slow, sound it out, try it out. You will get faster as you go, but there's no rush. It's not like, you know, I've studied French and I'm like, what is going on here? You can't know what, how to say a word in French unless you hear it. Because there's all these letters that are like, and I mean, I'm saying this as an English speaker. Come on. English is like the worst offender. So with Olelo Hawaii, first of all, practice. Give it, give it a try. Start with these lyrics up here that we're going to go over today. And then if you find yourself on the island of Hawaii, when you're walking around, when you're looking at things, just sound out the street names. Sound out the place names. Just give it a try. And also, it. If you go by these rules, nine times out of 10, you're going to be pretty much spot on. So don't worry too much about it. Okay? Yes. And also, 
please, when people talk about how difficult or impossible the Olelo Hawaii is, please tell them it's not. Dispel the myth, please. Especially if they speak English, if they're English speakers, be like, honey, don't talk about difficulty in languages, okay? All right, so let's talk about our song before I run out of time and that electrical worker man comes back and does whatever he needs to do and shuts off my power for a little while. Let's see, I'm pulling up my notes here. Uh, a little introduction. We are doing one of my most favorite songs. This is a song called E Kona, and this song is really close to my heart for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's about one of my absolute favorite places in the world, Kona, Kailua Kona, which is on the big island of Hawaii. Um, as we always talk about, each island has a leeward side and a windward side, which we, means one side gets more weather, it gets more, it gets receives the trade winds and all the rain and things that that brings with it. And the other side is sh kind of shielded from that. So it's a lot drier, it's usually warmer. And that is that that's the side that Kona is on. And in fact, you'll see the word Kona on a lot of different um, islands because Kona is that word for like leeward. So that's what the word Kona comes from. This, the official name of this area is called Kailua Kona, but a lot of people just call it Kona. And um, Kailua Kona also distinguishes it from, there's a place called Kailua on Oahu, on the island of Oahu. So Kona is on that west side of the big island. It's one of the most beautiful, ugh, I can't go on, it's, all right. Population's around 10,000, so not a lot of people, but it's got a really booming tourist industry. So there's tends to be a lot of people, especially in the warmer months. Um, on the north, like just a few quick like areas of interest on the north end of Kona, um, there is a hotel called the King Kamehameha Kona Beach Hotel, I think it's called. It's like a Marriott something now, of course it is. But um, there you're going to find Kamakahonu, which is, uh, this area is where Kamehameha, um, where his residence was while he was ruling over all of the islands. And for a little while, it was also the capital of the Hawaiian islands. Um, but then they moved the capital to Lahaina on Maui. But this was the capital for a little while. But it was um, Kamehameha's uh, residence. And then also his son, Liholiho. Once Liholiho moved, um, Oh, once Kamehameha the first passed away and his son Liholiho moved into power as Kamehameha the second, he also moved into this area to make it his place of residence. Um, it used to be like, um, it used to, oh, Kamakahonu, Kamakahonu means um, uh, Honu is a turtle and Maka is your eye. So it's like the eye of the turtle. And um, there used to be a big rock like to the left of the beach that was shaped like a turtle. So that's where it got its name. And a lot of really important historical things happened there. Missionaries happened there when we're gonna do it. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of important things happened in that spot. Um, the rock's not there anymore. And also most of what, what it was a much larger beach but most of the beach is gone now because they had to construct a big seawall. So if you have been to Kona, you probably know what I'm talking about. As you're walking along the shore north along it, you see that big seawall coming up. All that used to be beach for this whole, this whole area. Um, now uh, all the like structures that were there are gone. Um, they did in the 70s, they rebuilt a heiau, um, ahu in a heiau, which a heiau is like a temple kind of, um, but can have uh, different uses for it. But they rebuilt this, t this temple. Uh, and so you can see it, you can't go inside it or anything, but you'll see it there. And you can go play in this beach. It's a really beautiful, it's really small, but it's great for kids and stuff. So you can go play in this beach whenever you want. And then you see the, the, the hail right there, which is really nice. Um, another thing that's really cool that happens there every year is um, the Queen Lily Okalani race, which is the biggest outrigger canoe race in the entire world. Um, they hold it every year at like the end of August, beginning of September. Um, and people, that's that, that place at the King Kamehameha Hotel is where the race starts. And then you race south along the coast, 18 miles down to um, 
Pu'uhonua Ohonaunau, which is the city of refuge down south beneath Kona. Um, I did the race in, I think, 2012, something like that. And it is, it is one of the most incredible things I've ever done that I've ever participated in. It's the biggest race in the world. So there's tons of people from all over the world. And the, the women, the Wahine teams, race down from Pu'uhonua or from um, Kamakahonu to Pu'uhonua Ohonaunau. And then, um, and then they, you know, you get off your canoes and everybody celebrates and you get your lay and you look at the turtles in the water and everybody's crying. It's amazing. And then after everybody comes in and stuff, then they start the men's race, the Kane teams race back to um, Kamakohonu. Um, and then the next day they do like double hole races and then Monday they do cakey races and all that kind of stuff. It's a really magical, incredible event. And I just, I hope I get to do it again one day, but it's an amazing thing to see all these canoes just going for it. And there's so many of them. So very special place, very beautiful place. Let's talk about our song. I know I'm talking too much today. We're introducing everything. That's why. Okay. Ikona is a really beautiful song that was written by James Kelopolo in, I think, 1929 is when he wrote this. Um, and it's uh, he was so inspired by how beautiful and welcoming this place was for him that not only did he write this beautiful song, but then he just like moved there. So, and if you've ever been there, you understand that. So our first verse, which we're gonna do today, it goes, Ayayi kona kai o pua i kala'i. And I talked about that okina needing to extend over to the vowels. That goes across words too. So what I mean by that is our first couple words, aya i kona we need to say aya i kona as opposed to aya i kona as opposed to putting the glottal stop in front of that i aya i kona kai o pua i put a glottal stop there because i've got that okina in front of o pua i kalai aya i kona kai o pua i kalai a ohe lua elike Elike ai me oe. I keep stopping because I'm looking. A ohe lua elike ai me oe. All right. So what we're saying here is there is Kona. There is Kona. Kai o pua. O pua is the cloud banks that are above the kai, above the ocean. I kala'i in this calm, right? I kala'i is like my favorite word. Calm, stillness. A ohe lua elike ai me oe. A ohe, anytime you see, you see a ohe, or a ole, or you see ohe or ole onto a word. Usually it's like saying no or it's negating something. So lua means two. Our counting goes ekahi, elua, ekolu, eha. Lua is two. So it means what we're saying here is there is not two. It's saying to me, there is not two of you, is basically what that's saying. So very beautiful, very simple, but it kind of captures that just like tranquility and beauty of this song. Okay, so let's get into some choreography finally, right? Those are our words. Okay, so we're going to start off. I'm going to keep this super simple because I want you to focus on the feeling and the emotion of this song, of this really special place. So we're going to start with our hands. We're going to say, Ayayi um, kona kai opua. So what we're going to do here is, oh, let me mirror it. So it's going to be your right hand. You can mirror me. So I'm going to put out my hand here. It's going to be straight out. And I want you to make sure you're marking this and being specific with yourself. Don't just think like, oh, my hand just goes like this. It's like, it's starting here. Pick up, place your hand here, and your hand's going to go all the way around. And then you're going to turn over. Okay? So anytime your hand is here, I want you to pinch here and pull your wrist so that it's straight as opposed to like this. We're right here. I want my iPad to go to sleep. Wake up, wake up. Okay. All right, so we're here. Here, open and turn over. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our left hand 
over to meet our right hand. So my hand went like this, all the way around, and then it landed with my hand facing up. But then I'm gonna bring this hand over here, leave this, your right hand down, open with your left hand, okay? And it happens a little bit faster going, um, five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? All right. So next we're going to roll. We're going to make our cloud banks. Roll, roll, roll. Okay? And bringing the hands here. When you think of cloud banks, what's really beautiful, if you're looking out over the ocean at Kona, the clouds sit on, sit on the ocean in a way that can be kind of tricky, like you can't see them, you can't really see the clouds, but they're there. So what happens is if there's like ships coming in or something, sometimes it's like you feel like you can see out infinity, like you can see all the way across the sea and then all of a sudden like a ship appears and you're like, whoa. So it's like these cloud banks sitting on the ocean. Ready, five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, four, open five, six, seven, eight, and roll. Good. We're gonna turn our hands here and we're gonna, our roll is going to become waves in the ocean. Down, up, down. Okay, and then we're just gonna open the hands here like this, make that kind of stillness. All right, so again, five, six, seven, oops, start this side, five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The, the, count, the counts are kind of weird because of the way the music is. I think there's like an extra four count in there. So anyway, let's add the feet and then we'll do it with music. We'll figure it out. Okay, so all I want you to do for this first part is just koholo. Two steps to the right, two steps to the left. Okay, so this is our koholo to the right. Our hands come in here, right, left, right. Now turn over, left, right, left. Okay, again, five, six, seven, go. Right, left, right, and left, right, left. Okay, all right. Now here's where I gotta be careful because I'm teaching this to you backwards and I wanna make sure that I teach you the correct, Yeah. Okay. You have to go from right to left. Okay, so right, left to right. All right, so when we're here, our your roll is gonna go from right to left, and then your waves are gonna go left to right. Because you're going. Yeah, yep, that's right, okay. So your um, roll goes right to left, waves go left to right. Sorry, I have to make sure that I'm not getting this wrong. All right, so again, we're gonna call hello here. Five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now here, what you're gonna do is two big ummies. You're gonna be doing two big hip circles. And I'm going to, my hip circles are gonna go, they're gonna go, yours are gonna go counterclockwise. Right. Yeah, yours are gonna go counterclockwise. So your ami, when you count your ami, you want the count to land in the back. So when you're doing big hip circles, you're going back, back. You're going one, two, three, 
four. Again, one, two, three, four. Back and back, okay? So do yours counterclockwise, and this is during your roll. Three, four. One, two, three, four. No, I'm sorry. I'm mirroring you. I'm sorry I'm messing this up. Yours are right to left. Mine are left to right. Here. Rolling. And then we're going to kaholo here. And then finish your kaholo open. I'm sorry. I picked this song because I've been teaching this song for years and years and years. And it would be simple. And here I am getting like the most confused. Anyway. We're good. Let's walk that again. Ready? So we go start with your kaholo. Five, six, seven, kaholo. Right, left, right, and left, right, left. Two big ummies and right. Here we go. Kaholo. Right, left, right, open, left, right, left. Okay? Let's try that with music. It's really slow, so I can still call it out while we're doing it. Here we go. And here we go. Five, six, seven, go. Open. And walk. Do it again. Start with your kahalo, ready? Aya. Aya. Let's do the rest of this verse really quick. So we're going to, again, just with the regular koholo, two steps to the right, two steps to the left. We're going to, your hand's going to place out diagonal 45 degrees and bring it here to your shoulder. And then the other hand is here to your shoulder. Okay? So this is with your koholo. And kaholo. Now is where your kahela comes in. Remember, your kahela is your point. We're just going to do two here, right and left. Okay, so my hands were here. And what they're going to do is they're going to push out, and then you're going to flip them like that. Okay, so what you're kind of saying here is, like, there's not two of you. Okay, all right. So again, with your kaholo, with your uh, Koholo here, starting here, reach out. Five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and kohela, right, left. Yes. All right, good. Do that again. One more time. Five, six, seven, go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, and kahala, right, flip, left. Okay, let's add that on. And starting with here, aia. Five, six, seven, go. Right, left, right, open, left, right, left, roll. Back, back, kahalo, down, and open. And aohelua elike ai me oe. Okay? Then we're going to kaholo. This is just our vamp, what we're doing for the instrumental between each verse. We're going to be here, kaholo here, and out, here, and out. Okay? And let's do that in the beginning too. So you're gonna hear it go. Dun 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 dun, and then we kaholo. Dun, 
Dun, dun, dun, dun. Aya and Aya i Kona Kaiopua i Kalai Open Aohe Lua Elikei Me Oe and Kaholo. I'm going to do this facing the back now that we've got the hands so that because I think it's going to make more sense. I feel like I don't know if you're I feel like I'm still my brain doesn't feel like it's right. Anyway, let's do it together. I'm going to face the back. I'm going to face this way. So you're looking at the back of me. So I'm doing it with you. Ready? Here we go. Come on, look. Let's do it again. Ready? And Kaholo. Aya Ikona. Aya Ikona. throwing me off okay when you this is what's throwing me off adjustment on your kai opua your roll so your roll needs to happen from your roll is happening from your left to your right and then your hands are going to stay here for your waves or your waves are just going to stay down here they're not going to go it's not like one side then the other side. You're rolling here. You're um, rolling with your kaiopua, and then your waves are here, and then kalai opens like this. That's what was throwing me off because I was like, my hand's meeting the wrong place, okay? So, sorry about that. We open like this. And then that way, your left hand is already doing enough because it just traveled across like this. So now your right hand's coming to meet it and you're rolling. And you can make pretty big rolls here. Don't feel like you have to make tiny little rolls because if you do that, your hand has to cover, if you just let them be kind of, if you just like, you're here, if you just let them be kind of big like this, then that's, that's fine. 
And if you make them really small, then both of your hands have to travel a farther distance to get there. Okay. I feel like I'm rambling. Let's just do it a few more times. Yeah. Okay. So start again back at the beginning. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm hoping this is clear. Let's do it again. And tomorrow. Aya ikona. Aya ikona kaya you to focus on where you're looking where where your face is looking okay so we've done it a bunch of times hopefully you're starting to to get it to have memorized it and you can start looking where your hands are looking so let's mark that really quick so as we're going I'm just I'm going to be opposite of you since I'm clearly confusing myself today just so we know where we're looking so in the beginning when our right hand is out we're looking at our hand we're gonna sweep up, and you don't have to like this because that's again. No, we don't need that. All we need is let's look up here like this, and then follow this hand across like that. And then you're gonna watch your hands as they roll. Keep your attention here, going into your waves. And then now you're going to focus on your left hand as your left hand opens for Kalati. Okay? Now we go into Aohelua Elikeai Meoe. So we're going to look out. Look, make sure you're looking out toward your right hand. And in and out to the left. And in and straight out and open. And then when we Kaholo, we want to look at the hand that's moving out. Make sure when you go like this here, yes, we want to keep our eyes on our hands, but we don't want to go like this because it closes off our, us off from our audience, right? So we want to cheat this a little bit by looking down there. And with the eyes kind of down, it looks like we're looking down here and look, oh, here and here, as opposed to down here like that. So don't drop your head. Don't stretch your neck muscles back there. Just cheat it, cheat it like this, okay? So let's do it again, and you're focusing on looking, watching your hands, looking, looking. Ready? Here we go. And Kaholo. Aya Ikona. Open, look up, side. Follow and watch your waves. Open. Right. Look. Here. Out. Hala. Right. Aya Ikona. Here. Open. Yeah? Okay. 
Let's do this three more times. We're gonna do it together, then you're gonna do it by yourself, and then we'll do it together one more time. If you have any questions, chat them in the chat box. I can see the chat today, so feel free to chat it up in there and I can answer questions, or you can always, of course, ask questions later in the Facebook group or send me a message, whatever you wanna do. But here we go. your turn we'll do it one more time together afterwards and then I'll do it just one more time we can do it together but I'm gonna face the camera but doing it the correct direction so you can see you can see where all the hand motions go and stuff even though it'll be opposite okay ready here we go your turn you're on light up the Christmas tree ready smile big here we go and Koholo. Right. And and roll. Ami Ami Kaholo. Right. And left. And Kahala point. Right. Left. Kaholo. Right. Smile left. Aya ikona. Roll ami. Kahalo. Breathe in. Watch your hands. And kahalo. Ready? Right. Left. Kahalo. Right. And left. Malihini Mako. Good job. All right, here we go. Now, us together. Ready? Bend nice and low. Watch your hands. Smile. Here we go. And Kahalo. Ay, ay, ikuno. Ay, ay, One more time, just facing the camera so you can see the whole thing without me talking and all that kind of stuff. Am I back for now? Yeah. Okay, ready? So I'm not mirrored for this one. I'm just doing it um, regular, but facing the front. Here we go. Hi, yeah, you come on. Oh, 
does your hand get over for Aya e Kona after the vamp? It goes after the vamp I'm going here. Okay, so you want to what you want to do is drop your left hand and then your right hand needs to go straight out. So one thing you want to be careful not to do is add in I call it taking the scenic route <laughs> where this is a spot where your right hand should go from here, straight out there like that. But a lot of times, if you don't tell your hand to do that, it's just gonna fill in the blanks by going like this. So you want to pick it up and place it straight out. So I'm going here, right, and left. So the, this, I'm going like that. here, like that. See, this one comes to my pa'u, this one goes from here to straight out there like that. Yeah, hopefully that clarifies it. So from the front, it looks like a koholo right, koholo left, and here. Yeah? Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if any other questions. Um, also, again, I posted, there's the link to the um, Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group yet, get in there. And um, you can always please post questions or you can message me. Please feel free to send me video if you want any constructive feedback. I'm here for you. If you have any other questions about stuff we talked about today or anything else, if you have questions about Hawaii, about Olelo Hawaii, our language, um, I love questions. I love researching. I love figuring that thing out. Yes, definitely. Look at the comments. Dropping the hands is such a common thing. And I always say it's because, you know, as human beings, we think in terms of sentences and phrases and paragraphs. So I think it's only natural that when we're dancing, if we don't tell our body parts what to do in specific spots, they put in those kinds of end of phrases too by dropping down and then placing back up as opposed to just going from staying here and then going to the next spot. And then it can do things like throw off your balance or it can add a lot of clutter to your dance. Dancing, um, which if you look at some like the best dancers, they make it look so simple, right? And it's because they're not doing, there's a lot of motion that they're not doing that you see in more beginner dancers doing. And it just makes a really clean, simple, beautiful look to their dance. And that's really a difficult thing to do. It takes a lot of practice to get there. So watch out for that. Whenever you you have that opportunity to remove excess motion from your dancing. So let me know any other questions that you might have. Um, we'll be back next week with week two out of four that we're working on Ikona. And we'll get into our second verse, Malihini Mako. And we'll also talk about some more history. It's history week next week in our classes. We're doing history also um, for our intermediate class too, which we're working on um, Ke, which is a hula that takes place um, at a place that's just a little bit south of Kona. So we're all, all about the leeward island of the big island of Hawaii. And um, I love it. So also, if you um, have ever been to Kona, please post in the Facebook group post uh, your experience there and um, how much you loved it. Tell other people about it so they can build that relationship with the place, even if they've never been there too. Um, yeah. Okay. So thank you all so much. Mahalo nui loa for joining us today for beginner hula. And uh, I hope you had fun and I will see you online and have a wonderful week. Take good care of yourself. Wear your masks, stay healthy, take care of each other. 
Um, it's really important and um, please stay healthy so we can all. Um, oh, me too. <laughs> all right. I love you guys. Off we hope.